Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Andy with Phantom Fishing and I want to do a video for you. I hope everything is going well. You know the spawn is coming soon. Fishing is going to pick up really quickly here in Illinois. I know down south you're already smashing bass and and uh, I'm catching good fish shallow but I'm just going to talk to you about how to prevent your line from breaking just by basic things you should do all the time and I know I'm going to probably break my line this year because I didn't do one of these things. The first topic I want to talk about just the improper setup. They got too big of a heavy of a rod with too light of line and just trying to put it on a big old fish or something and it just doesn't work out because it's just not set up correctly so just basic knowledge just make sure you have the right setup you're not going to want to use six out six pound test with a medium heavy rod with a texas rig or something like that you just you, you do a little research make sure you know what you're fishing for what the line size is how heavy of that action of that rod is and you'll you'll do just fine the second thing is you gotta check your rod certainly this is one of the crucial crucial things especially if you're chucking and winding make sure you're checking your guides and even sometimes in the reel but make sure there's no nicks quick way to figure that out and most people know this is just to take a q-tip go around the guide if you see little pieces of that q-tip stuck in your guides you have a little crack in there and that can cut your line so be aware of that make sure that line guide has the same you know the little piece that goes back and forth that runs your line evenly on your spool make sure that doesn't have any sharp edges or cracks in that also that could cause it too and also make sure your tip and any other guide on your rod has the ceramic inside it if it's designed to do so because that is what is the smooth piece that could have the crack in it but it could be missing also so just make sure it's in there or you're going to cost yourself some fish you're going to ruin your line and you're going to have issues third reason i think most people cost themselves some fish or lures or break the line is you accidentally are melting the line or damaging it on your own what i mean by that is when you're cinching your knot down uh is a big time that you need to really be careful and pay attention to what you're doing because you can easily pull that line through especially with fluorocarbon you will actually melt it and and put too much friction on and that will become a weak link so then your knot is virtually useless because your knot is going to be stronger than that line just above the knot and that's what's going to end up breaking instead of cinching it and pulling real hard just pull the knot down to the eye now number four goes along with number one but there's two parts of it it's one sometimes you're using too heavy of a lure for the line you have so be aware of that because if you try to launch a big old bait you're going to see it sail across the lake into some dude's yard and he's going to spit it out with his mower but also you got to adjust your drag you know you're not going to want to set the hook on a three pounder and it pull drag because you're not going to get the good penetration but you're also not going to want to use say 10 pound line set the drag all the way up with a medium heavy rod and just just set it like you're freaking he-man either you do that and it's gonna find that weakest point in your line and it's gonna snap real quick okay fifth and most people like i, I want to i just want to say again most people know all this stuff but some of you just don't think about it while you're fishing so anytime you catch a fish or you throw into cover or you snag something or you come across the rocks or anything you just make it a habit to always run your fingers down 
probably, you know, the first foot at least above that lure. Now, the only instance you're probably going to have an issue besides that, if you have good guides and all that, is say you got snagged in a tree or a dock or something and your line was rubbing higher up on something. Be aware of where it was rubbing, check that area, make sure it's not nicked up. And if it is, retie, retie, retie. So the last part of this is pretty much when the fish is on and you get him into that cover, you know, you're gonna retie afterwards, but don't just yank him out. Sometimes they get locked in there. The best thing to do, I know you're never supposed to put slack in your line, but sometimes you gotta give them slack. They're locked into cover. You can't get them out. The only way you may get them out of certain situations is either they swim themselves out or you release the pressure and you can and they maneuver to where you can pull them out. So sometimes when they're stuck, you're going to have to hit the button and let some line and, and hope that they that doesn't let the hook fall out of their mouth. And it does sometimes. But other times, I've seen them swim right out of where you need them to go, and then you end up catching a fish that you really expected not to catch. So, those are the quick tips on not breaking your line. I know everyone's saying, oh, I already knew this, but guess what? I guarantee one fish this year will break your line for one of these reasons, even though you know. And they'll break mine too, and I already know it, and I hope it's not a giant. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subs So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you'd like to. If not, that's cool too. Watch some videos. If you don't like my videos, go ahead and go to somebody else's channel and watch their videos. But that's it. Hopefully it does help you. And hopefully the fish I lose for not doing one of these things is not a monster phantom bass that I'll never see again. And until next time, you know, especially is true this time, in this video, it only takes one cast to break off a phantom giant.